I don't know if it's come out on the channel recently, but I try to pride myself on being optimistic, looking for the positives in anything that we talk about, whether it's Pokemon, whether it's Avatar, and that's been rewarded recently, or if it's just news in general, talking with friends, I try to look at the positive, I try to look at the glass half full. We need to take a moment, put that optimism to the side, and talk about the glaring issue in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl today. And that is the chibi overworld designs as something crashes to the ground outside my dorm. These designs are not the best, and we're going to dissect why in this video. Everything else looks great. I'm actually a big fan of the art style, but these overworld sprites, they're not good. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl were expected by most Pokemon fans, but the art style and the way in which we're getting these remakes was not. If you have not seen my video on these remakes, I did an entire discussion video talking about what we're going to eventually get from them. There'll be a card in the top right corner of the video. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. I basically discuss how they say they're going to be faithful remakes to Diamond and Pearl, but we've already seen some Platinum stuff mixed in already. So we know that we're getting more than what they're already marketing it to us as. But one thing that we saw very clearly in the trailer are the human design, the human character designs, the models in the overworld. They're very chibi. They're designed in a way to fit the art style. The issue is the art style looks fine. The overworld looks quite pretty, in my opinion. I think the lighting looks really good, and I think they managed to take the 2D-ish, 3D-ish world of the DS games and bring them over to Switch in a way that's really appealing. As well as, the battle scenes look really good. The backgrounds look solid, there's a lot of detail there. The character designs in battle, the fully heightened characters, as you may. Some people have said they want black borders around the characters because they feel like the line between the rest of the world and the character itself is very, it's non-existent. I don't fully agree with that. I think the characters look fine in animation. I think the Pokemon look fine in animation as well. But those chibi characters, man. There's just something about them. If you guys played Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, the remake on Nintendo Switch, this is the same thing that they went for. The issue is in Link's Awakening, the world was designed almost toy-like. So it still had the same small scale style, but everything was like incredibly shiny. It was, they were toys. It was like you were playing in a Link's Awakening toy box. Pokemon and Ilka Inc., the developers of this game, did a half measure here. They did not go fully into that toy style. They went chibi. They went this very like cartoony, uh, chubby looking character design that I can imagine in meetings they felt this looks very similar to what the original games did. This is respectful to the original art style. The issue is the art style only existed in that way because of the hardware it was on. As we've seen from the evolution of Pokemon games, Game Freak was always trying to improve this style. It got better in HeartGold and SoulSilver. It got even better, almost, in my opinion, almost perfected for this 2D world in Black and White and Black and White 2. As soon as they were able to make that jump to 3D, they made the jump to 3D and they went to Pokemon X and Y, Oras. They made another jump in Sun and Moon on the same hardware. They managed to take an art style and totally flip it on its head for Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. And then when we moved to the Switch, it was still that same Sun and Moon style in a way, but it was up on the Switch. It was not how Diamond and Pearl look. It was still the same formula, of course, but it was very different. We're taking a step back in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and we're trying to replicate something that was only, that only looked the way it did because of the hardware that it was on. Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, Heart Gold, and Soul Silver, all of the old Pokemon games are fantastic. It's my childhood. Platinum is my favorite game of all time. Second, um, only behind Breath of the Wild, and that's a close, that's a close one and two. But the art style should advance. If you're going to do a remake of an old game, I want you to add something that makes the old art style appealing again. They almost got there. The world itself looks, quite frankly, it looks gorgeous. They got closer to that Link's Awakening goal with this. 
it looks fantastic. A lot of that is done by the lighting. The lighting in some of the areas, Eterna Forest, looked especially good. The Valley Windworks, I believe, was in a sunset, but I might be wrong. I'm not looking at the footage at the moment. It looked fantastic with the shadows. The overworld looks good. The music sounds really good. The battles look really good. I'm not sure if the Pokemon models are the exact same as Sword and Shield, but those models look really good. I've never, I've never had a problem with the models, but that's a whole discussion video for another day. These overworld characters, it's a, it's a replication of the original style for no reason. You could have gone all in on that toy-like approach. You could have made these guys hyper-stylized. You could have made them essentially up resed models from the original games brought them over. I would have been okay with that, but instead they tried to redo it. They tried to take it and almost, they, they kind of walked the art style up to current day, up resing it, trying to make it look higher quality while kind of imagining, okay, if we kept doing this same formula the entire time, what would this eventually look like? And we haven't come to a very good answer. This was one of the criticisms that a lot of you guys left in the comments of pretty much any video that I've done on Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl up to this point. These, these are not liked. A lot of people do not like these designs. I know a couple do, and people on social media have been railing against these, these designs and basically begging Ilka and Game Freak and Junichi Masuda, who's working with Ilka, to change them. And listen, the game, if we were like a year ago, I would say, you know, make those claims. Ask, you're going to be the one purchasing the game probably for $60. You should demand what you want. I never have a problem with people holding back their dollar. A lot of us don't have a ton of money to spend and we pick and choose what games we buy. But the game looks pretty complete. The game looks decently close to being done. Uh, and we can tell that because the game's coming out anywhere between October and November, even September maybe. They said late 2021. We'll see what that eventually brings. But it's not going to change. This is what we're stuck with. And I think that we need to ensure that we don't move forward doing this for every game. I have no issue going back and remaking games as long as you put some sort of twist on it that makes it worthwhile to the consumer or it's not as high priced. This one looks as if we're going to get platinum mixed in, which is going to give you the best of both worlds. And as you've seen in some of my previous videos, I think we're going to get some more modern features. I think we're going to get a bigger Pokedex. I think we're going to get Megas or some kind of newer feature to kind of mix it all in. We're going to have home support. I think we're going to get all of those things. And to me personally, as someone who enjoys the main story of Pokemon games, that makes it worth it. But these chibi designs, chibi, chibi, however you want to pronounce them, you could have done it so much better. They want, as I mentioned before, they wanted to essentially walk up the style to modern day, but we saw exactly what that would have been. They walked the style up and you know what they did? They made constant improvements. For as much as we criticize Game Freak, they've been giving us an incredibly varied set of games recently. My friend Ryan, who's in my sub box, Chromanize, put out a tweet very close to the announcement of these games, basically talking about, look at this, we got Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee with its own original art style. We got Sword and Shield with its own original art style. We're getting Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl with its own unique art style. We're getting Legends Arceus with an evolved art style from Sword and Shield. We've got an incredibly varied set of games stylistically on the Switch, and that's something that we never see from Game Freak. That is something that is only happening in this new era of Switch with the hardware they now have at their disposal, which allows them to do a ton more. But that doesn't mean that bad decisions are not worth criticizing. And that's the one thing that I want to end on here. Just because you're excited for a game, just because you're going to buy a game, if Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are full $59.99 games, I'm going to buy uh, Brilliant Diamond on day one, and I will eventually get Shining Pearl. Maybe I won't buy it myself, maybe it'll be a gift for like a holiday or a birthday, but I am a po I'm a massive Pokemon fan. I get every single main series game, eventually. I love having the entire collection. It's just something that I enjoy as someone who's put a ton of time into this series. Being excited for something, being anticipating something new, Legends Arceus is a great example here. Being optimistic for the future, that doesn't mean you hide all of your criticism and you just speak glowingly about something. This is the mistake that a lot of us make on the reverse, where we are not going to get something, we actively dislike something, and it's popular and it's hip and it's cool to just rag on things. It's 
popular to be negative in this world of social media and total interconnectedness that we are in today. I'm sure this video might do pretty decently because it's a negative video and I'm criticizing something, but just know that it doesn't have, you don't, the entire gameplay experience and the entire game itself, these remakes, they don't have to be ruined by one aspect, but I think it's important to point out what some issues are. And these, these character models are not great. They're really not. It feels like a step back. It feels like we could have had a really cool thing here and we just didn't. And that's it. I want to know what you guys think about the uh, character models in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Be sure to let me know in the comments. I'm sure there's going to be some wildly varied opinions there. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, that button is also there. We are growing very fast, and I just want to thank all of you guys for the support. We're going to be introducing some varied content onto the channel shortly. We're going to talk some Avatar pretty soon, which is going to be fun. But that's it for me. Let me know if you guys are excited for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, as well as your thoughts on the models, like I mentioned before, down below. And I will talk to you all in the next video. Peace out.